Hey there folks, welcome back to thewindowdog.com. I'm Dan and today we're going to take a look at different types of spacers. We've got four common types of spacers to look at. The spacer is the part that goes between the two panes of glass in a replacement window or three panes, separates the panes of glass, tries to prevent the energy from transferring back and forth. Let's get ready for fun. So today we have four of the most popular spacers we're going to look at. Uh, we've got a whole test apparatus here set up in our secret test layer, which is also known as my kitchen table on a beautiful Sunday morning in the summertime. This is the kind of stuff I do for fun because I'm kind of weird and all I do is windows. So let's set the stage for you here. We've got a clock in the background. That's going to be so you can see how long we're letting these things soak in the uh, ice water. We've got a pitcher full of ice water. It's got some ice cubes on the top there, help keeping it nice and cold. We've got a bowl full of fruit in the background. That was just on the kitchen table this morning, and I thought it looked pretty. I'm probably going to eat that banana here uh, as soon as we're done. We've got a Tyrannosaurus Rex over there because you never know what you might find in my house. And uh, down here at the bottom, we have a laser thermometer, and this is going to help us uh, perform some of our tests. So to get moving here, uh, we've got four different types of spacers. We're going to take a look at, um, at each one in particular. We're going to see which ones are, do the best job of resisting the transfer of energy. Uh, the goal of the spacer, obviously, is to keep the heat on one side and the cold on the other. So the more they conduct energy, the worse they perform. You'll hear all sorts of sales claims out there about this one's the best, that one's the best. As we know, when we test these things, everything isn't the best, right? There's typically only one best. And uh, with this test, I think we're going to be able to get to the bottom of it. So the first spacer we're going to look at here is old school. You probably won't see these in new windows, but you might see them in old windows you've already got. It's called an aluminum box spacer. Uh, what it is, when you look at the sort of side view, it's, it's kind of like a rectangle. It's connected on all four sides. Uh, there's a downside to that is it does typically allow more energy transfer. Like I say, you will still see them in commercial windows. You typically don't see them anymore. In replacement windows, we do see them in a lot of old windows that we are replacing. So you might look at your current windows, you may find it. Next on our list is going to be an intercept spacer. This is made by PPG. They make millions of these every year all over the country. Very popular. Probably the most popular type of spacer. So we'll stick that in there. Next one is the newest one. This is a, a different type of intercept spacer. This is called a, a stainless steel intercept spacer. Different companies use different names. Outside calls it a Therm D spacer. Um, really any stainless steel spacer is intercept spacer is the same as another. So you'll see them uh, offered from all different brands under all different uh, trade names. And the last one on our list here is a mylar spacer. This is completely non-metallic. It's made out of mylar foam. Uh, it's called super spacer or sustain view spacer. Again, they go by different names. Climatech Plus is one. Um, really, one, they're all one and the same. If you see a non-metallic spacer as a non-metallic spacer, that's what they are. So as we get uh, moving right along here, we're going to get some ice cubes in these cups. So we've got novelty ice cubes because why not, you know? So these are Darth Vader heads, and we're going to plop some Darth Vader heads in each cup. Uh, one in each cup. We're going to use the same exact number of ice cubes and style of ice cubes in each cup so we don't get any criticism from you scientists out there. We want to make sure we have accurate, uh, accurate and repeatable tests going on here. In fact, we'll do two trials at the end so you can make sure it was, in fact, repeatable. So that was the Darth Vader heads. These are, uh, looks like maybe some X-Wing fighters. I'm not, uh, not up on these things, but some sort of a Star Wars fighter plane job. Uh, you can tell somebody in my house is a Star Wars fan. Uh, you can get these novelty ice cubes at thinkgeek.com. Maybe we'll just put a link on the site because it's uh, fun stuff they have. Our third and final ice cubes are going to be these giant brains. Take a look at that guy. You must have big brains if you're buying things at thinkgeek.com, I'll tell you that. So we're going to put one big brain in each cup and... Uh, that's the biggest ice cube, so it's probably going to provide the most cooling. And we'll get those plunked in there. Whoop, hit, hit, hang on, let me get this back up here. We'll get that, and then we'll get that fighter plane. Whoop, hit, slippery, hang on, there we go. So now we've got all three of the same uh, ice cubes in each cup. So we've got uh, accurate, consistent tests, and then we're going to uh, see where this takes us from there. So the next step is going to be to grab our uh, frosty pitcher back there, and we're going to fill each of these cups up with some ice water, and hopefully that will... Uh, uh, that'll get our test started. So you see I've got some condensation on that pitcher. It's a nice summertime day. I've got the windows behind me open. We do not have the air conditioning on in here today, so it is, uh, you know, a little afternoon, starting to get a little hot. You can see on our clock we're at about 1240 as we're getting the uh, the ball rolling on, on this test. Oop, yep, spilling a little water there, but don't worry. It's is the all-weather tablecloth we've got here. Uh, wait, wait, there we go. It's all good. We'll just fill these up. So you see we've got the, about the same amount of water in each of the four cups. And then uh, it's going to be time to do a little time travel in here. So we're going to let these soak as they, uh, as they get cooling. Um, the test will start working, and uh, we'll see where we end up. So here our clock is whizzing forward. Look at that. It's, it's going at the speed of light back there. We're going to give it about 20 minutes to soak, so we'll take this maybe 25. So we'll take this to just before 1 o'clock. 
and we'll get our handy dandy laser thermometer. So what I'm gonna do is assume it says 70, 75 in this room, let's zap the table and get a feeling for what it is. 76, there you go. We're gonna do this in Fahrenheit, so I apologize to our Canadian friends, you're just gonna have to figure it out. I bet, uh, I bet you're used to that. Uh, so let's zap this box spacer. This should be the worst, it should be the coldest. And there we are, 56, um, awfully cold, um, 20 degrees colder than the table. Here we are, 61 on the intercept spacer, so not much better, but I guess that's to be expected. It's kind of an old, uh, old technology. Here we are in the stainless steel intercept. Look at this bad boy, 55. That's worse than the, uh, than the other one. No, it's not so hot. And then we'll take a look at the mylar spacer. This should be pretty good. Well, there you go, 75. So it's the same time as the table. The table was 76. Let's hit the table again, 77. And the mylar spacer was 75. So it's essentially the same temperature not conducting any, any, any energy, which, uh, you know, was the goal of this whole operation, so that's pretty solid. Um, in order to, uh, to make sure we've got some repeatable tests going on, let's hit these again just to make sure. So we've got this box spacer here, we'll get it down near the water, uh, that's at 50, so, all right, and then we'll hit this uh, uh, intercept spacer again and see what we get there, 51, Ooh, a little chillier than last time, maybe it's sitting in the ice another couple minutes. Let's hit this stainless steel intercept, or the Therm D spacer here, and see what we get. It's kind of reflecty. Make sure we get a good uh, reading on there. Looks like it's 56. So again, awfully chilly. Awfully chilly. 20 degrees colder than the table. And we'll hit this uh, sustain a viewer super spacer, um, spacer again and see what that is. Should be nice and warm, would be my guess. But let's see. We'll get down there near the water. There we go. What's that show us? 74, yeah, so that's pretty consistent. We were 75 last time, 74 this time, and the table is 77. So let's take a look at some results here. I think it's, we've got a pretty clear, uh, pretty clear winner on our hands, but um, we know it can be difficult to interpret these things sometimes. So when we take a look at our results, we've got two trials, uh, the table temp and the box spacer, the intercept, the stainless, and the mylar foam. So we'll pop our results here. Ta trial one for the table was 76, trial two it was 77. Box spacer was 56 and then 53, got a little colder over time. Intercept was 61 and 51, that's quite a drop. Um, maybe we'll do a third test on that sucker, see what's going on. Stainless was 55 and 56, so about the same. And the mylar was 75 and 74. So you see the mylar foam is the exact same temp essentially as the table, while the others are all quite a bit cooler. We've got a clear winner, folks. The mylar spacer is absolutely the winner. The trade names for that product you'll see offered as a super spacer. You'll see companies call it a sustainaview spacer. You'll see um, Climatech Plus. I know they all have different names for the same thing, and I know that can be frustrating when you're looking through it, but anytime you're looking at a non-metallic or a foam spacer, you're essentially looking at that thing. They've got the market cornered on that product. So we know you hear a lot of sales pitches out there. We hear everybody says they've got the best thing. In this case, it's pretty clear. Uh, one product is, in fact, better than the other products. And... Um, Seems to be a pretty accurate test because the whole idea is to resist the transfer of energy. It seems like it did the trick. So we, uh, we certainly appreciate you spending a couple minutes with us today. Take a look at the windowdog.com for the absolute latest and greatest in replacement window news and information. There's no better source on the entire internet for window information. And we're glad you came. Hope you enjoyed it. Have fun.